Good morning and welcome to this daily devotional, um, Bible, this Bible study with me. And uh, we will be jumping into John chapter 20, starting in verse 19. We will see how the disciples respond uh, when they are told that Jesus is indeed risen. Um, they will... Uh, we're going to see them in fear. We're going to see them uh, slow to believe, but we will then see them commissioned to the task which Jesus has for them. And this goes for all of us too. Um, where are you in your faith and where are you um, in realizing that you are sent by Jesus to tell others about him? Let's begin with a word of prayer, a time of confession, and uh, to seek forgiveness for our sins. Let's pray. Lord God, we lift up our sins and our failings to you now. Lord, we praise you that in Christ we can find the forgiveness of our sins. There is no one else on earth or in heaven whereby we may be saved. We praise you for saving us. Lord, help us to hear your voice this morning and to apply the things that you tell us. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. All right, we're picking up in John chapter 20, starting in verse 19. Um, we're going to see this commissioning of Jesus, of his disciples. They're already his disciples, and he's already sent them on lots of missions, but here we go. So Mary Magdalene, uh, verse 18, went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them what he had said to her that he will be ascending to the Father. Verse 19. When it was evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked because they feared the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Having said this, he showed them his hands and his side. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So we see a lot happening in these few verses. First is that we see that they are hiding. They are locked in their upper room because they are afraid. Um, they are afraid and they are um, not knowing what to do. But they're together. And then Jesus suddenly appears in their midst and says, Peace to you. They're afraid. But then Jesus speaks to their fear. If we believe, we will not fear. Or rather, we'll fear something greater. We'll fear God instead of people. They did not have the Holy Spirit at this time. And when he says receive the Holy Spirit, he's speaking of a future event because they don't have the Holy Spirit when Jesus leaves them. That comes later at Pentecost, right? So they feared the Jews. They didn't fear God. They didn't really believe yet. When Jesus appears to them, they don't go, oh, there he is. <laughs> you know, I mean, they know he's alive already. Oh, oh, but there he is. That's where he is. No, they're like, not sure he's alive. They, uh, they have to touch him. They have to see the wounds on his hands, his side, and his feet. If we will believe, we will not fear others as well. But 
when we are afraid, God, he cares. And he commands peace, right? Um, <laughs> this is the same man, Jesus, who commanded the sea, peace be still. And he commands his disciples, peace be with you. If the waves and the wind just stopped, how much more in their hearts, everything, all the worries just stopped as well. Having said this, he showed them his hands, his side, so the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. They saw, and now they believe. But it took them seeing him with their eyes for them to believe. How about you? Will you only believe when you see, or will you believe when you hear? When you hear the word of God, when you hear him, or will you refuse to obey him, refuse to follow him until you see him with your own eyes? Jesus said, blessed is those who have not seen, and yet they still believe. Right? That's coming um, just in verse 29. Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet believe. We are blessed if we believe without seeing. The disciples needed to see. They needed it. But also we see in verse 21 here, Jesus said to them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. So they see him, they, they realize the truth, but then Jesus immediately says, I am sending you. I'm sending you out. He's been training them for this. He's been preparing them for this. But they certainly aren't ready for it. They're going to need something else. But you see how their faith is integrally linked to them being sent. They believed and they're sent. And we... We are, when we believe, we are also at that time sent. The Holy Spirit comes within us and we have the power that we need to go testify to others, to share with others what Jesus has done for us. Salvation and missions are, are you can't separate them. You can't separate them. Salvation and evangelism. Verse 22 here. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a lot of bad theology that goes around um, just all of this with the Holy Spirit. Uh, some things we should note. One, after he says this and breathes on them, they still don't have the Holy Spirit. How do we know that? Well, we can look and find that in Acts. They don't have the Holy Spirit. That's why they're huddled in the room. We're waiting on the Holy Spirit. When God promises something to us, he doesn't necessarily give us a timetable of when we're promised to have it. Sometimes there's a delay in the receipt of what is promised. It doesn't make it any less real. It just means we need to wait for it. Jesus promises them the Holy Spirit earlier. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. And part of the reason why he's saying this is because they're going to need the Holy Spirit in order to accomplish the mission that he sends them. One of the marks of the Holy Spirit, a very powerful mark of the Holy Spirit, is this. If you, receive, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, you are re, they are retained Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a supernatural thing. And when someone forgives deep hurts, it is a mark that the Holy Spirit is at work in them. Receive the Holy Spirit so that you can forgive. Do you think these guys might be a little bit upset with Rome at this point for having murdered Jesus? Now they are a lot 
happier now that Jesus is alive, but it's still, it's kind of, they murdered you. Will they hold it against the Jews that cried out, crucify, crucify, crucify? You can just imagine the Sons of Thunder are getting all ready to go have a rumble, right? Um, now that we've been proven correct, we've been proven right, uh, let's go tell everyone off. But yet, the Holy Spirit is needed so that you can forgive others. To release things and not hold on to them. I don't know what you may be holding on to. I'm not saying what people have done to you is all right. I'm not saying that in any way. Now, we can get offended by things that we shouldn't be offended by, but the deepest hurts of our lives tend to be things that, yeah, they really shouldn't have done that. Us forgiving them is not minimizing what they did. What we are doing is we're turning over the judgment, the right to bring justice. We turn that over to the Lord. Are you holding on to things that you need to turn over to the Lord and give up your rights? Give up your rights to judge them. Because, you know, it's often said that by not giving up that, by not forgiving, you are usually hurting yourself more than you're hurting them. Friend, brother, sister, turn it over to the Lord. Whatever it is. Let Him judge. Do you trust Him? Turn it over to Him. And you forgive them. And let the Lord deal with them. That is one of the greatest marks of the Holy Spirit's work in you, is that forgiveness. And also, us being on mission with God. Us telling others of Jesus. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you uh, as you get to the things you have to do today. Lord God, I pray that you bless each and every one listening, that they would release the burdens, the revenge upon their heart that they hold against other people. Lord, teach us to, to be forgiving. Help us to not hold these grudges against people. Lord, help us to truly believe in you and to trust uh, in your mission that you have entrusted to us to go and tell others of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you would uh, guide us today into forgiveness as well as sharing with others. We pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't already hit the white subscribe button down below, um, please make sure that is checked and hit that like button to help get this out to more people. And there's some other videos here that you might want to check out. Otherwise, I will see you later. God bless you all.